It's so cool to see the archive of Sideshow's premium format figures, because you can see how over time they've become more ambitious with the poses, the materials they're using, you know, and revisiting some of our favorite characters with new sculpting and new manufacturing techniques. And now we're about to check out some of their newest ones for 2020. This is the Superman Call to Action premium format figure, and we kind of wanted to test the boundaries on everything that we have known before, uh, including the sculpt and the balance of the piece, as well as the cut and sew. This is an extremely ambitious project. Um, so this is kind of a quintessential Superman moment uh, that we wanted to capture, but we wanted to give collectors a choice as well. So we do have him in the Clark Kent configuration right now, but there is a Superman portrait with the kiss curl and a slightly more determined look on his face. But the coolest thing about this piece besides the kind of uh, counterpoint to balance where he is balancing on one foot uh, running through a puddle in a metro metropolis alleyway, is the fact that uh, this is a statue that interacts with its own fabric. And if, if you look back across our catalog of pieces, a lot of them do have the cut and sew elements or the mixed media, but it's mostly, it's shirts, it's capes, it's, it's pieces that the collector can pose if they want. But um, this, this piece has tension. This piece interacts with its own fabric as he is removing the shirt to reveal the Superman symbol beneath. So this is a, a really unique sculpt. Um, there is wiring in the, the collar of the shirt and the tie, so you can get some dynamic action uh, if you want to pose that yourself. But very specifically from the, the tailored pants to the suit jacket and undershirt, this piece interacts with its own fabric, which is is, is a really cool addition uh, to, to the collection. And, and I don't think you can see it from this angle, but the base of the statue is also in the shape of the Superman logo. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's a really nice kind of tribute to everything that Clark Kent and, and Superman are as, as, a, as a hero of Metropolis. Um, so this is just, it's a piece that you can't help but feel inspired looking at as he, he bursts from the alleyway and uh, prepares to save the day. And it, what a perfect character for it, because it's you know the larger than life hero, but with then the very grounded materials that of him going from civilian, from Clark Kent to Superman. You also have tiny glasses. Yes, so cool. yes. And so uh, I, I love, I personally like the uh, the Clark Kent portrait because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Clark Kent girl. Um, but yes, he does have sculpted glasses. He has a, a hat. This piece has, I mean, he even has a belt with a belt buckle. This piece is detailed from head to toe because we wanted to make sure that if we did this moment of, of transition from the, the civilian to the hero, that it captured everything that was the best of both sides of him. And I can tell there's gotta be a really strong wire from that foot through to the top of the torso. Yes, our, our sculptors made sure to take into account the physics of the, the counterbalance and, and the fact that he is on one foot uh, leaping through a puddle. Um, it, yes, it's ex extremely cool uh, the way that science plays into the sculpts of these beautiful art pieces. Uh, and, and the balance is a really important part of the statue as well. And this is the prototype right here? Yes, we are looking at the prototype. It is available for pre-order on our website currently. Um, and I don't have the estimated shipping window, but uh, it did premiere earlier this year. So people uh, do have the opportunity to get on that. And it is an all-inclusive edition. So you get both versions of the, the Clark Kent and Superman portrait with the one edition, there's no exclusive to this one. So here I think are two wonderful examples of the premium format figures where they have dynamic poses that emerge from really interesting bases. So strange here, the cape is cut and sew it looks like, is that right? And yes, yeah, so the, 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 um, the red cape has a lot of actually different versions of cut and sew fabric going on. There is the kind of gold and black patterned trim. There is the more suave uh, kind of silky looking red on the inside and then on the outside is kind of a more classic uh, cloth feel that gives the the cloak of levitation it's kind of uh, relic status to it um, in the center as the clasp of course is the eye of Agamotto and uh, contrary to what your eye might suggest the rest of his costume is completely sculpted even oh. though they they managed to get the stitching details on his costume in there so you you would believe that it it seamlessly transitions with the fabric, um, but he's got a lot of dynamic motion and, and realism to the sculpt of the rest of his costume. I can even see like the patterning on the top of the cloak. You have like the, the perpendicular cross-hatching just to show that it is not, it, it's, 
in that world to the scale also. Yes, and I think it adds an element of the kind of comic book come to life uh, with, that, with that amount of detail. Um, and it captures the light really well. The cloak extends to 24 inches wide at its widest point. So if you really want to be fancy with Doctor Strange, it does have internal wiring to support that. Um, but as you mentioned, he is leaping out of kind of a dark dimension portal base because he is the Sorcerer Supreme. And of course, he is casting a very vibrant spell. And, and one of my other favorite kind of little details with characters who cast spells or fire energy is that the, the paint of their hands or whatever is ex uh, emitting the energy is painted to reflect that light source. So his gloved hand does have some green elements to it so that you get a full experience of this. This spell is enveloping him in the way that he is casting it. And you're adding extra layers of paint, both on the, the kind of portal, you have the spell, and also on Silver Surfer here, that yes. cosmic look to you know what he's surfing on. Yes, so these these maquettes are really a chance to to go extremely hard with the detail. I mean, with some figures, uh, like six scale figures, the base needs to not detract from, from the piece where you pose it, but these pieces, the base is part of the story. So this is the Silver Surfer, highly anticipated, perhaps one of the most anticipated pieces from Sideshow for this convention. He was teased during our uh, 12 Days of Sideshow holiday event, and this is Norrin Rad in all of his cosmic glory. I mean, he is a sight to behold. And of course, you always have to wonder, oh my goodness, is Galactus going to eat us next now that we've, we've seen him emer emerging from the cosmic portal? But the, the portal itself has a, a really cool um, kind of textured and ingrained in the paint star field. And, and the stars vary in size. So it's almost as if time and space are warping around him as he, he wields the power cosmic. And there is depth to the star field. Mm, and this very reflective finish. Yes, it's a it's a very, very nice silver finish. We wanted to make sure that this wasn't just a silver flat piece because he is so reflective um, and it needed to capture every detail of his physique. He stands about 25 inches tall, I believe. Um, and it's a, it's a kind of a museum pose, a very firm. Uh, this is a surfer who knows exactly what to do on his board, but he's got that dignity to him that you see, especially as he is a Herald of Galactus. Um, just a really stoic and kind of uh, intimidating uh, demeanor about him that we, we were excited to capture. And um, actually, I want to point out, he does have an exclusive accessory that matches with a proximity base. Um, we like to call them proximity bases when they don't connect, but they are displayable right near each other. They match. This is Frankie Ray Nova. Um, this is a really cool piece because if, if collectors uh, order the exclusive edition of the Silver Surfer, they almost get an entirely secondary character, uh, quarter scale about a uh, bust of Frankie Ray, and she does have a light up hair feature. It is not on display currently, but we are looking at the prototype. And, and I think this, for fans who have been really aching to add to their cosmic collection, this is kind of a one-two punch of essential Marvel characters. How long are these types of sculpts and products in development before they can be unveiled? And That's a great question. I mean. From, from the announcement, the tease that we knew he was, he was coming from the holidays in December now to July, um, it's a, it's a nonlinear process because of the ways in which they can move throughout. Um, I mean, even Dr. Strange would have to go between sculpt, cut and sew, paint. There might be adjustments throughout. So it, it varies piece by piece. And I, I don't know if there's a definitive answer I can give for that, but each of these pieces is actively changing and extremely dynamic throughout the solicitation process all the way up until the point we, we launch the gallery and put it on display on our website. And the point where it can be displayed at the Comic-Con, the Sideshow Con, you know, booth, so to speak. Yes, we have to make sure the paint is dry. Uh, but yeah, this is, it's, it's very exciting what we've been able to get ready to, to show everybody for Sideshow Con this year because this would have been just a small uh, sliver of what we had on display at San Diego Comic-Con. Amy, I wanted to conclude here with this massive Rancor. Uh, this isn't, of course, quarter scale. This is a, a deluxe statue. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we know the exact scale of a Rancor, but we did our best approximation. This is a, a deluxe piece for a reason, uh, for Star Wars fans who are really looking to kind of, if they want to add to their Jabba's Palace collection or, or they're just a fan of the big monsters of Star Wars. He measures about 29 inches tall and, and roughly the same wide, uh, thanks to his massive stance and those gigantic claws, which are definitely bigger than uh, my hands. So it's pretty intimidating. Is this what you consider like um, an artist interpretation or are you trying to go for the, the puppet? So this is, this is as screen accurate as we could get it to be, but 
obviously, um, based on the, the age of the film and the angles we see, there are aspects that we didn't get to fully see realized on the Rancor puppet. So this is a new perspective based on our artists um, studying of the original materials and adding the details that we would see closer up if we actually got face to face with the Rancor. There are scars and scales and rough textures and kind of uh, a lot of spines and horns on this creature that we might not have had the chance to see on film. So it, it gives people an entirely new perspective of, of what this beast truly looks like up close. And it's an example of one of the massive things that you guys have to ship as a product in terms of how it comes apart and comes together. Yes, and so that is always also a, a, um, a challenge that our uh, production team is always uh, taking into account the, the safety and shipping. We do things called drop tests with the boxes to ensure that uh, Obviously not with the product that you are getting shipped, but we do we do rigorous testing to make sure that pieces uh, like this can be preserved as perfectly as possible for collectors. And this is this is going to be a uh, get a friend to help you lift this box when when the rancor comes in. But I do want to point out uh, this this massive piece. Uh, he does have some fun details in the base, including the skull of a Gamorrean guard uh, who unfortunately fell into the pit with him, um, and and the feet were a challenge because uh, they had to support this type of character. And so our artists also do look at real world animal references. And I believe um, specifically rhinoceros yeah. uh, were, were a part of the inspiration for the Rancor. And it's also really fun uh, in, in the maw and the, the nose of the creature, you can see um, they've even added glistening paint. So it looks like flaring nostrils fresh with disgusting saliva and snot. And I mean, that's the level of detail you expect when you, you get a deluxe statue of a Star Wars monster brought to life. Yeah, just a little bit of sheen to catch the light in the eyes or the, you know, the snarl in the teeth. Yes, all that, that all of that contributes to making the, the beast feel alive, even on your shelf. Thank you so much, Amy, for giving me a tour of the booth here. It's so amazing to see these without the, the plexiglass cases. Yeah, that's been a real privilege getting getting to show an even more unfiltered access to the detail that our artists put into these pieces. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. And we can't wait to come back for the next con.